While traveling a lonely section of Interstate 70, north of Dayton, Ohio, Robert Robinette was driving a little too fast for the law. In this case, he was moving along at 69 miles per hour in a construction zone posted at a mere 45 miles per hour limit. The law in this case took the form of Deputy Robert Newsom of the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. What followed was a standard issue traffic stop. Deputy Newsom asked for and received Mr. Robinette's driver's license. A quick check with his dispatcher revealed to Deputy Newsom that nothing was out of the ordinary and that Mr. Robinette did not have any previous traffic violations on his record. Deputy Newsom asked Mr. Robinette to step out of his car, gave him a verbal warning for driving at an excessive speed in a construction zone, and returned his driver's license. But before Mr. Robinette was on his way, Deputy Newsom had one more thing to say. One more question before you get gone, are you carrying any illegal contraband in your car? Any weapons of any kind, drugs, anything like that? Mr. Robinette's response was direct and short, no. Well, if that's the case, then we suppose there's nothing Mr. Robinette has to hide in his vehicle, right? Deputy Newsom asked the next most logical thing an officer would do in that situation. Do you mind if I take a look for myself? Apparently, not wanting to be discovered to be a liar, Robert Robinette upped the ante and replied, sure, go right ahead. Very quickly, Deputy Newsom discovered a small amount of marijuana and in a film canister, a pill whose chemical name I couldn't possibly recite here, but thankfully is also known as MDMA. Deputy Newsom arrested Mr. Robinette for being in possession of these two controlled substances. This sounds like a pretty standard traffic stop that resulted in a consensual search that resulted in a standard controlled substance arrest. We probably shouldn't have heard about this case any further, but it ended up before the Supreme Court of Ohio, and that's where Mr. Robinette's fortunes changed. There in the heartland, the state Supreme Court ruled that the federal and state's reasonable search clause required a police officer to warn a previously stopped motorist of his or her right to drive away before the officer can lawfully obtain consent from them. The Buckeye State Supreme Court even supplied language for the law enforcement officer to follow. And I quote, at this time, you're legally free to go. The state of Ohio was free to provide whatever additional safeguards it liked under its law to its citizens. But as stated, this court held this verbal announcement was mandated by the federal constitution as well. This didn't sit very well with the United States Supreme Court. Chief Justice Rehnquist, author of the opinion, wrote that touchstone of the Fourth Amendment is reasonableness. Reasonableness, in turn, is measured in objective terms by examining the totality of the circumstances. In restating this standard, Chief Justice Rehnquist specifically rejected any bright line rules to establish the reasonableness of a consent search. He emphasized the fact-specific nature that the reasonableness inquiry must rest on. In other words, judges will have to apply common sense to determine if an officer acted reasonably in obtaining a motorist's consent. The majority of the court knew that there would be endless variations in the facts and circumstances surrounding judges' determinations of reasonableness. By some experts' estimations, 90% of all warrantless searches are conducted by officers that obtain consent to do so. The highest court in the land recognized the futility in trying to develop a singular rule that would act as some sort of litmus test for resolving the reasonableness question for this fantastic number of fact patterns. Judges remain empowered to evaluate the reasonableness of consent searches that came before them on a case-by-case -case basis. And the story of the Fourth Amendment continued on. My name is Trish Besselman, and this has been a Fletzy Talk.